Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the pathophysiology of Alzheimer's disease. So Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia and dementia is a syndrome associated with an ongoing decline of brain function. So it can affect memory, uh, language, frontal executive functioning and many other mental abilities. Alzheimer's is a neurodegenerative disorder meaning you're going to have the degeneration of neurons in the brain, particularly in the cerebral cortex. It is also a progressive disease, meaning it will get worse over time. Now, a typical patient with Alzheimer's disease uh, will present with minor memory problems. However, as the disease progresses, they develop other symptoms, such as confusion, disorientation, and a big thing in Alzheimer's is getting lost in familiar places. There's going to be difficulty planning or making decisions, problems with speech and language, problems with the activities of daily living, so that's essentially just taking care of yourself. Uh, there can even be personality changes and hallucinations and delusions. And patients with Alzheimer's disease will often present with low mood or anxiety. Now, the exact cause of Alzheimer's disease is unknown, however, we do know that there are some physical changes that occur in the structure of the brain caused by a buildup of two proteins. So these are beta amyloids and tau. So here in this image, we can see uh, neurons and these clusters of uh, proteins here, right, in, in orange. And these are the beta amyloid plex that cluster together outside of neurons. You can see these balls. And then inside the neurons, we have these blue uh, proteins that are kind of clustered together as well. And these are the tau proteins. So they form tau tangles and beta amyloid plaques. So let's talk about these beta amyloid plaques first. So in the neurons, we have a protein uh, called the amyloid precursor protein. And it is a normal constituent of neurons and it is believed to help neurons grow and repair. So here we have that protein, amyloid precursor protein, and in normal physiology, it is uh, cleaved by this enzyme here, alpha secretase, right, to form uh, these two uh, peptide fragments. And this is uh, neuroprotective, that's what's supposed to happen. So cleavage by alpha secretase, shown here around this region. However, in Alzheimer's disease, this protein, the amyloid precursor protein, is going to be abnormally cleaved by beta secretase and gamma secretase. So as we can see here, it is cleaving to these three uh, peptide fragments, one of them being the amyloid beta, which is toxic. This uh, amyloid beta is toxic because it can aggregate outside the neuron and form these plaques. Um, so these beta amyloid plaques may come in between uh, neurons. As we can see here in this image, we have these neurons in blue and this very big uh, beta amyloid plaque. And this will prevent the synaptic transmission. And this is of particular importance in cholinergic synapses which tend to be the most affected ones. So in the brain, you end up having low levels of acetylcholine in Alzheimer's. There's also a disruption in the neuronal metabolism. Uh, that's, um, let's say, for example, of the glutamate reuptake mechanisms uh, that involve the brain resident microglia, so the glial cells, uh, in particular, are the astrocytes next to neurons. And so if the glutamate cannot be reuptaken, uh, it stays there in the synaptic cleft longer. And so you essentially have higher levels of glutamate, uh, leading to uh, glutamate excitotoxicity of the neuron. So there's too much excitation of the neuron, which will lead to cell death. So these two um, um, consequences here both lead to neuronal cell death. That's what we're going to see with the degeneration of neurons. There's also a inflammatory response that takes place with these beta amyloid plaques. So we can see here the infiltration of mononuclear 
phagocytes, and this also contributes to neuronal cell death. Now, if these beta amyloid plaques are deposited in blood vessels, we have amyloid angiopathy, that's the name of the condition, and this will increase the risk for intracerebral hemorrhage. Next, we have the tau tangles. So, uh, tau protein is also a normal constituent of neurons, and it will normally bind to the microtubules inside the neurons and help stabilize them. Uh, thus, it helps support the neuron and the transport of nutrients and molecules throughout the neuron. So, that involves the transport of neurotransmitters. Now, in Alzheimer's disease, uh, the tau protein detaches from the microtubules, and so it will associate with other tau proteins that have also detached from the microtubules, forming tau tangles, also called neurofibrillary tangles. And we can see these here as these little squiggly blue lines. These are all tau proteins uh, essentially attaching to each other. And uh, since they have detached from the microtubule, that microtubule will essentially uh, fall apart. Uh, and this will further impair the um, transmission of information in the brain as you have an impaired transport of uh, the neurotransmitters to the synaptic cleft. This will also contribute to neuronal cell death. So this slide here is to summarize what happens in the brain uh, of someone with Alzheimer's disease. So here we have a healthy neuron. We see, we see the tau proteins attached to the microtubules and they are all um, nicely arranged and stabilized. Uh, now here outside the neuron we see that there, there are no amyloid plaques and this neuron looks healthy. Now in a diseased neuron uh, with Alzheimer's disease, you can see that the tau proteins are detaching, they have the tau tangles forming and the microtubule essentially falls apart. And in, uh, outside the neuron we have these beta amyloid plaques there disrupting synaptic transmission. Now the risk factors for Alzheimer's disease include age, so most people diagnosed are over 65 and uh, if you're over 80 years old there's a 1 in 6 chance of developing Alzheimer's disease. Uh, also sex uh, plays a role in it, so Alzheimer's disease is more common in women with twice as many women over 65 diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease than men, and Down syndrome as well, uh, as the genetic fault that causes uh, Down syndrome can also cause to amyloid plaque buildup uh, in the brain. Um, severe head injuries have shown to uh, play a, a small part in uh, causing um, Alzheimer's disease further in life, and then we have also the, the lifestyle factors uh, that can lead to Alzheimer's disease. And those are the ones associated with cardiovascular disease. So that includes smoking, lack of exercise, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Um, and also people that have a family history of Alzheimer's are also more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. So now let's talk about the pharmacological treatments for Alzheimer's disease. So... One of the medications include acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. So, acetylcholinesterase is an enzyme that will break down acetylcholine to remove it from the neuronal synapses. So, we have this diagram in a different language, unfortunately, but uh, it, it, you can clearly see what's going on. We have here acetylcholine being released into the synaptic cleft, and here, this enzyme right there, acetylcholinesterase, will break down acetylcholine into choline and acetate uh, to then be uh, taken up by the neuron again and you have that recycling um, of the choline molecule. Now if we inhibit acetylcholinesterase you don't get that breakdown of acetylcholine and so there is more acetylcholine available at the um, neuronal synapse. And since we've seen that in Alzheimer's disease, you have a decreased uh, levels of acetylcholine. Um, by giving the patient acetylcholinesterases, uh, this will help with that uh, neuronal transmission. So some examples of these drugs are donepezil, rivastigmine, and galantamine. Next, we have memantine. 
um, it will essentially block the effects of an excessive amount of glutamate in the brain. So mamantine is an NMDA receptor antagonist and NMDA receptors, here we can see this uh, diagram, um, is a glutamate receptor. So we have here the glutamate binding site that is going to open this channel, uh, allowing glutamate to exert its action in the neuron. So if we inhibit this uh, channel, this receptor, uh, you don't get that action of glutamate in the neuron. And so this is going to help decrease that um, glutamatergic excitotoxicity seen in Alzheimer's disease. Now both of these medications that we talked about uh, will not stop the neurodegeneration seen in Alzheimer's, but they will simply help ease the symptom. So someone uh, taking these medications, um, essentially it will not change the course of the condition, um, meaning they will still deteriorate and around the same time. However, you get to ease their symptoms. You get to keep that person how they uh, are for longer. Now we've got some uh, questions to make sure you've understood. Uh, feel free to pause the video if you want. And let's get to it. So question one, what is not a typical presentation of Alzheimer's disease? Which proteins cause the physical changes in the brain seen in Alzheimer's disease? Amyloid beta is formed due to cleavage of amyloid uh, precursor protein by How does acetylcholinesterase inhibitors help in Alzheimer's disease? Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe for more.